Okay, animation is all about setting up your resources and having a plan that you're executing. That's why it's a collaborative effort usually. There's script supervisors and continuity experts and people that really keep you on task. And you have a director overseeing the whole thing, right? So my storyboard just starts with the establishing shot and then a bug comes in from the right corner. And that's all I've started to build with my space bug here, right? And so in order to get the bug to kind of come in and move believable in animation, I created all of these different movement tests. And then I have my other character who's gonna be popped up back here. Now, before I actually make some frames to test, I wanna have my other character uh, successfully camouflaged in there. And so in order to do that, I need to figure out which aspects of my landscape are making that hard. And one of them is this thing, which I basically just want to erase from this stage element. I think I had it as a shadow underneath my creature at some point. So a lot of it is just about setting up your assets correctly so that everything works the way you intend with your story. You really do have full control of every pixel. Okay, so if my guy is there, how can I make him kind of sink in a little bit better? Well, I can use Puppet Warp for him as well. So that you can see how that works. I'm going to say Edit Puppet Warp. Oh, I can't be on a folder. I have to be on the creature itself. Here we go. Edit Puppet Warp. Click along the spine, behind the head, maybe on the tail. And then you see, I can shake his tail. I can move his spine to be curved or not. Right. I don't need to worry too much about his legs because his legs don't even really get seen in this animation until later. But I'm just going to use these anchor points to sink him into the scene a little bit more believably. And I might do the tip of his, his mouth too. So there he is, sunk into the scene, right? And let's see, is there anything else that's covering him? Yes, this rock back here. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And I'm going to take this character, because I puppet warped him to fit the stage. I'm going to copy that whole folder. And move it onto my, oh no, I already got it on my assets file. So I'm going to copy that whole folder, move it onto my stage, where that character, character Y needs to go. There he is, then move him into place. Whoops, come on. Oh, I have to uncheck auto select to do the group. There we go. All right, that feels pretty nestled. Okay, very good. So now I can start building my space bug frames. So the way I do it is I'm going to take my first space bug. Here he is. I'm gonna copy that layer, move it onto my stage. This is my actor. Paste him in, Command V. And he is on top of everything because he's in the foreground. Okay, so he kind of comes in like that. Okay, next, I'm going to go to my assets and I'm going to go to my next space bug layer. Turn it on. I usually do Command A and then Command C. Paste that in. 
move that to where I think it should be. This allows you, you've already rehearsed it, but this allows me to con, you know, make sure it makes sense and helps me see it all a second time. This is actually gonna be filming it, right? So it goes from that to this. Okay, next, go to my assets file, take my next position, select A, command C, go to my stage, paste it in, move him into place, right at the edge, his foot's right at the edge of that rock. So far so good, so it goes from this to this to this, and then we dive overboard with the next one. So this is a nice little sequence. So now command uh, C back here, command V. I always show the layer before so I can kind of keep that leg at the same place. And then I might decide a slight change of the asset, right? I'm gonna tilt him a little bit more extreme like that. And I'm gonna darken him a little bit. And I can do that a variety of ways. Like I can burn him. And I think actually maybe the easiest way would be just to limit his highlights. So he doesn't get super colorful. Okay. Now I'm going to actually move that. Or I'm going to now erase from that asset. So that's why we keep our, our stage separate from our asset files. Because now I can use a 100%, uh, I need to be on the eraser, 100% eraser, and show that he is now past the lip of the rock. And do I want to do it with the antenna too? I don't think so. I think I want the antenna to stay on top. So it's a pretty big movement, which just means it, it, it will go kind of fast. Maybe I don't want it. Let's see. Yeah, so I don't want it. So that is the asset taken from my assets file, but now kind of tweaked for the stage, right? But if I ever make that decision, I have that asset I can still bring in. That I puppet warped and everything. Okay, next one. I go to my assets, and I'm almost to the end of this first little stage. I'm going to select all and copy that bug and move it on top of everything on my stage. I'm going to switch my stage over to here, paste it in, place it. And because I did it, changed it with the other one, I'm now going to change it with this one as well. Rotate it. Have it kind of dip below a little bit smaller, maybe over here. Maybe even puppet warp it. And bugs are fun. So that its head and body like really just angle differently. So this antenna might still see a little bit of it. Going over the edge. Okay, but on this one, now everything's on the other side of that rock. So I'm just going to take this lasso. And cut it all out. And then let me puppet warp it so that leg makes a little bit more sense. There we go. Okay. And then it's going to disappear, right? So this is my first little movement where the bug's going to come up over these crystals. So how do I actually make it into an animation? This is just a test. This is not the final footage. These are the dailies. I save it first. This is my stage file. I have a clear movement test here, all in sequence. So I'm going to start it without the bug being on the screen, and I go to Window, and I use the Timeline tool. 
And on the timeline tool, I click on create frame animation. We're doing frame by frame here. And then I'm going to set the timing for the animation. And I'm going to say other, because the default timing I like is 0.3 seconds, which is a little bit faster than three frames per second. Okay. So then I'm going to have it repeat forever, not just once, under these settings. And now I'm going to make new frames. So I'm going to say, just like you do a new layer in the new layer window, I'm going to say new frame. And it will, it will duplicate it over, but now this time I'm going to add in the space bug. And then I say new frame. And then I'm going to add in the next space bug and delete the earlier one. Then new frame, add in this bug, delete that one. New frame, same thing. New frame, same thing. New frame, get rid of the bug. All right, so this is going to be a really tiny little thing. But now I'm going to play it through. I'll hide my guide so you can see it clearly. I'll make it nice and big. Play. And that is my bug going over the first little lip of, of it. Now, it goes fast, but you can see how the position of the head changes, the position of the antenna changes, the shadow kind of moves with the bug, and it's traversing the landscape in a way that will catch the eye eventually. But it goes, it goes by just like that. So I just did a little bit over a second's worth of animation. All right. All right. So if that works, then this is what you have to do, and this sucks. But this is what you have to do. <laughs> because I'm going to be adding frames and changing it, I have to select all of these in the timeline and drag them down to the trash. I do not hit delete. If I hit delete when I have a frame selected, it will delete all the layers that are connected to that frame. All the frames are is programming this little eyeball tool with the layers, like which layers are turned on for how long. And that is it. So now I'm going to get out of the timeline tool. And I know that that's my first little movement cycle of the bug, and it works. So what do I do? In my stage, I group that all into one folder. And I say bug movement one. right? And now I can start doing bug movement two. <laughs> and bug movement two. I'm going to actually just duplicate bug movement one, because I think I can use a lot of the same assets. If I don't need to create new assets, then I've, I save time. And now I'm just going to take that whole folder, and I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to scale each it all down. Remember that you can do that to a whole group. So that, now the bug is going to be quite a bit smaller, because now it's in the middle ground instead of the background. And I might um, just distort it slightly just so it looks a little different than the first time around. And I'm going to get rid of these ones where it was diving over. So basically, I have one, one, two, three bugs to play with. But I can move them around in order now, because this is bug movement two. And now it's going to be a movement cycle where the bug just tra traverses the landscape. So I'm going to start with, let's see, which one's biggest? Yeah, I got to start with this one. And I'm going to move bug movement to, instead of having to erase their legs, I'm going to move it behind the close foreground. As simple as that. Okay. So now, the next layer, up. Oh, I lose legs there, so I'm going to delete him. Okay, now I'm just going to skitter between these two. 